All right, welcome to Smart Living. And sitting next to me is Joe Ducey, who you may know from ABC 15. He was an investigative reporter, and we've worked together for 12 years. So today we're going to talk about funeral homes, and there's been a lot of talk about that with the FTC, and you've been hearing a lot about this in the news. A lot of funeral homes are taking advantage of people when they're in a very vulnerable time. So we're going to chat about that. Mm -hmm. Joe's going to educate us about that. And, of course, we're going to talk about the days when we worked at ABC 15 mm -hmm. will go down reminiscing words. So let's get the show started. Okay, Joe. Well, thanks for taking time out of your day yeah. to pop over and uh, chat with us today. So one of the things that you guys may not know, I know a lot of people don't watch necessarily local news. No offense. That's one of the mm -hmm. reasons why I left. But um, you left. Yeah. You have left ABC 15. How many years were you at ABC 15? 18 years. 18? Oh, yeah. my gosh. About a 40. I was in the business 40 years, 18 years at ABC 15, yeah. Wow. So you basically have been a consumer reporter for 40 years. Well, not always. General Simon in San Francisco, a little bit in uh, Tampa, Detroit, but then investigative in some of those places too. So probably like 20, half of that was probably investigative consumer news. Yeah, so he really yeah. knows a lot of consumer yeah. information and how to make sure that things are uh, right for you. Yeah. So you've left ABC 15 and you're still working. So where can people find you now? Uh, Better Business Bureau of uh, what we call it, Pacific Southwest. Okay. Yeah, so I'm at the Better Business Bureau. I'm trying to bring some of what I learned you know, I did let Joe know for uh, 18, for 10 years of the mm -hmm. 18, and I'm trying to bring some of the stuff that we did there by protecting consumers, but also not being anti-business, you know, being showing how to get the good businesses and avoid the bad. You know, mm -hmm. that's what we're really trying to do there. So through podcasts like yours and, and others um, and videos and things, we're trying to do that. Right. And yes. And so Joe and I have actually been doing a little bit of stuff together, which has been kind of nice yeah. to work together. Um, I did a podcast with him over at the BBB, which I think is fantastic. I think this is a perfect fit for you. It is. What a great transition. But I expected, me... though, your studio to have this nice couch, this colorful <laughs> couch. You don't understand. <laughs> when we were at ABC 18, we're eventually going to get to it. This one had the best office around. I did. I don't know how you I kept did. it for so long. Oh. But it was like, it was big. I had a little booth, basically. Yeah. Everybody had like cubicles, but I actually had and an you office. Had, she had this orange, couch. wasn't it like an orange couch or something or yellow and uh -huh. big chair, fluffy oh, yeah. chair. People and everybody wanted to like, cam, um, oh hang out there. But yeah. we'll anyway. talk about that yeah. in a little bit. Right. But you know, I know how to live my life well. You do. I make smart choices, hence mm -hmm. the word smart living. Yes. <laughs> You're good. So, well, let's let's first let's get started on the thing about with funeral homes. I've been hearing a lot in the news with funeral homes. It's like one of those businesses that go unsuspected. Um, a lot of people, um, you know, well, first of all, people don't really think about you know mm -hmm. what you do when a loved one dies, and the last thing you think of is going to a funeral home. But in the news, you've been hearing a lot about funeral homes scamming people, mm -hmm. nickel and diming them, overcharging them for services. And basically taking advantage of people in a very vulnerable position. Mm -hmm. Have you been hearing this? Yeah, you know, and it's kind of surprising because I thought actually with less people being buried and more people being cremated that it wouldn't be as big an issue. Because I, I remember covering this in, in various places I've been, and we did undercover work, trying to find which of the places would give us the, the prices and would they try to talk you into something more. Talking to a package, right. which is what they shouldn't be doing. Would they give you prices up front? Would they be transparent? In a lot of those cases, we found you know, that they weren't. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of surprised, um, that it's, that it's going on still, you know, that, I mean, I think for me, everything's about transparency. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're transparent up front, this is the price for this. It should almost be to me like a list. This is how much for this coffin, 439. This is how much for that. Instead of this gobbledygook, sometimes it happens, mm -hmm. not just here, but other places too, right. where they try to, you know, mess it up. So you don't really know what you're getting. Right. And that's probably what's happening in these cases. Right. So I recently, um, yeah. I won't mention, but it was a local funeral home here. Mm. Um, and uh, my friend, uh, her, his mother had died. And so they just simply wanted it cremated. They, um, and his mother was in hospice. So when they're in hospice, they have recommendations of funeral homes to go to. So they were on the list of recommendations. Oh. So they'd been vetted. Mm -hmm. So why would you think anything differently? Uh -huh. It came as a recommendation. And so the body gets... Once um, she passed away, the body goes to the funeral home. Okay, that's where you're beholden to the funeral home now. This is where they start doing not so good stuff. So the funeral home will call you and say, hey, we need you to come down 
and, you know, pick out, you know, the things that you want or the vase. If you're going to have, you know, this person cremated and, you know, um, and they want you to come down so they can do a whole sales pitch on you. Yeah. But my friend was like, no, no, no. I just want her cremated and I want this vase. I don't need to come down. Like there's nothing else that we need. Yeah. They absolutely refused to. They were insistent upon him coming down. So he called me and he's like, what do you think I should do? I should go get out of there and find yeah. another funeral because they're going to nickel and dime you. Yeah. And that's what happened. So when he called and said, well, I don't want to use you guys. I'm going to use someplace else. That's when all of a sudden they're not releasing the body. You have to pay $1,000 to release oh, the body. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so this is what's going So on. what's interesting is the it's the it's a transaction almost between the death, I mean, the hospice, I guess the hospice place and the funeral home. I mean, it was recommended, I guess, on a list, right? But that's mm -hmm. kind of where it happened. Right. Um, and so... I think, well, a couple things. I mean, first of all, it's horrible. First of all, you're in a situation, and that's the big problem here because it's such a, an emotional time, and it hits you like this, and people don't want to talk about it beforehand. No. Right? So you don't want to work out beforehand right. what should happen, which is what you should do. It is. You know? And find the place beforehand, like what, where you want. Um, some people have done prepaid uh, yes. funerals. I'm not sure that's always a great idea because, really? I, yeah, I've done stories where – the company's gone out of business or the company didn't put it in escrow like they should have okay. or, you know, that kind of stuff. Because if you do it 10, 15 years, how many businesses last? You're right. You know, you have a really good point because that's actually yeah. what I was thinking about doing was I'm somebody, I take the initiative on everything. Like I have a trust, I have a will yeah. and you know, I, I'm getting older. I don't know. I could die tomorrow, you know, for all I know. But that's one of the things that I want to do is make it easy for when I die for my daughter because I only mm -hmm. have one child. Yeah. So I was actually going to prepay for my cremation. Yeah. I, well, you know what? I, I'm sure there, there are very good places out there, and you yeah. can find them at the Better Business Bureau, right? <laughs> right, I don't right, know, right. on the Better Business Bureau first. But uh, and if you have a complaint, uh, file that as well. Yeah, uh, and I want to talk about that more yeah, yeah. BBB. But I, uh, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, I think that the Neptune Society is probably a good place to look to for cremation. Okay. Neptune Society is, I think, a nonprofit, and they keep it very low, and they're really big on... Um, making so, sure that everything's on the up and up. Okay. You know, if you decide on cremation. Uh, burial. So, so Neptune is a place where you can go get cremated, like it's not a funeral home? No. Neptune Society, I'm not sure if they connect with funeral homes, but if you look it up online, I think it's Neptune, uh, neptunesociety.org maybe. Okay. But they're really the consumer advocates for the cremation industry. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And they, they that's will. That's great information, Joe. Yeah. I'll put that on my blog after the show airs. Yeah. Okay. Look them up. Make sure that you, uh, you're, you're good with it. But I think that's the one that, and I think they're in most cities, most okay. areas. But if you go to them, they will for they have a minimal cost for the cremation. Um, now, if you want, I don't know if people put them in a put cremation in a box and still bury it. I don't think they do that, no, right? No, they put no. them in a okay. They usually have like, yeah. you know, a vase or yeah. and they distribute it amongst family members. But uh but the other thing is, I mean, so it's tough to prepare unless you find one based on reputation, you know when I die I'm gonna go there. Uh -huh. Because I've talked to for relatives, everything's been really good there. Now management can change. Yeah. But you at least know that, you know. Um and I guess the other thing is, you know, when you do find this place, and I keep going back to that. I mean, okay, your relative dies, right? Mm -hmm. You're in a panic. I mean, what am I going to do with this body? Right, exactly. Like you're, you're, at, you're at the mercy of these people. You're not going to be like, oh, I'm going to shop around for a week mm -hmm, or two. Where mm -hmm. does the body go? Right, What exactly, do you do? Where does it, exactly. you know? So it's like you're thinking, okay. So, because, yeah, I think you're, you're in a really tough position. So the better you can have somebody in mind who will do this, great. I think that's that's the only way you can protect yourself. Right. You know, um, I was going to read the FTC. Yeah, read the FTC because you yeah. were, we were saying you that were, the federal. When trade you brought this up, I started looking in just into this. Um, the FTC. I'm going to have my glasses. You need your glasses. That's all right. I'm hold good. On, hold on. You no? can't read nothing. Oh. This is what happens when you get to be over 50. All your friends. Oh, I always well, have an extra pair of readers around. Okay, I like those. <laughs> uh, throughout 2023, the Federal Trade Commission personnel from across the country placed undercover calls to more than 250 funeral providers asking for price information. We don't know of any of them. We're here. Uh, staff determined the providers violated the funeral rule on 39 of these calls. Wow. So that's more than, that's 15, 20% almost, right? Yeah. Almost. The most common violation was refusal to answer price questions over the phone. Those companies have received warning letters and emphasized. So, and there's a, like a $50,000 violation, but they have to tell you what the price is over the phone. They can't say, come on in, because yep. that's when they start talking to you about the deal. Right. The they also can't highlight only package prices. They can't, they can, they have to be able to say, if you just want this, 
that's so much for the casket. This for the service. And that's this, not what they're doing. That's not what they're doing. Obviously, you can see 20% of them, according to the FTC, yeah. is not doing that. Yeah, almost. Uh, so very yeah. important things. I want to reiterate what Joe just said. So number one is when you are looking for a funeral home service, they have to be up front with the pricing. Yes. On the phone. Yes. It's $2,500 for the cremation, period. Yeah. And then the second thing is, is that they have to be forthcoming, you said, with, yeah. the, with the different packages that they yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. Right? And not try to talk you into a package. Right. But tell you specifically, no, I don't want, I don't want the service and the flowers and all that. Right. I just want a burial or a cremation in a, in a can, right. Right. <laughs> whatever it is. Um, they have to be able to tell you what those individual prices are or not. Well, we put that all into our you know, uh, spiritual, package, right. eternal package. Right, which is going to cost you twenty five thousand. Oh, the other thing is, I mean, the other thing is, I mean, the old days, they used to, I don't know they still do this, but it's like, I don't want a stainless steel coffin, Right. you know? But that's what they kind of lead you to down there. They used to lead you to the expensive ones. I mean, and don't show you the box, Right. you know? Because they're playing on your emotions. You're right. like, oh, I can't put dad in a that's box. That's exactly right. You know, I can't put dad, but you can put dad in a box. Dad didn't care. Right, he's dead. Dad's, <laughs> dad's dead. <laughs> He's dead. I, I, so, I know. I, and it's you know? weird as us as humans that are living because we want to honor the people yes. that we love that pass and we want to be disrespectful to them. But really think about it. They're dead. And they, they would rather you have that money and spend them on your yeah, kids, they their grandkids. And not worry about the, yes. their funeral that they're dead. In most cases. Right. In yeah. most cases. I mean, yeah. there are some people that maybe, I guess, stuff like that matters. But yeah. that's absolutely correct. So something to look forward to. What was the name of that website? Ne Neptune Society. Neptune Society. Again, yeah. I'll have that on my blog at smartshopperdaphne.com. Okay, let's move on a little bit. Now, let's talk about the days at ABC 15. We're going to give you guys a little bit of insight without... We can't talk about everything. We can't talk about everything because, trust me... Like the time that one thing happened? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> or the time the other thing? I flipped off, oh, you know God. who? Yeah. <laughs> Or was screaming and at you. And who was you doing who? what at the anchor desk? <laughs> right, no. right. Or who was sleeping with who? No, I can't do that. Ooh, lots of stuff that we're not going to share that no. on this show. That didn't but happen. we'll give a little bit of funny stories. So um, I was there when Joe got hired. What year did you get hired? 2006. Okay, so I got, I got hired in 2014 or 2004, 2004, yeah. and I left in 2016. So we worked together for the majority we of did. the time that I was yeah. there. And, you know, Joe was more about the consumer reporter that was fighting for the consumer rights, and I was always about showing the consumer how to save money. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, Joe and I would always have, like, these side conversations. We're like, you know, we should really get together, and we should do, like, you know, you fight for the consumer, and I do this. And, and then we go, and, like, we present an idea. They'd be like, no, we're not doing that. Yeah, I know, because yeah. they always know better. Right, they always right. know better. That is not the truth. No, it. Uh, we did work together on one. I can't remember what it was, but we worked on one where they I had it. I in trouble. Was it, didn't did it get in trouble? I don't remember. We, we but it was did something. something where... I did, you did deals something, and I and I, but I ended up getting like, like in trouble for it because I did something where I asked somebody something. I swear oh. it was the story that we, the only story we did on. I yeah. ended up in trouble for. It. I don't even remember. I just remember. I thought it'd be cool because I thought it'd be cool trait. Uh, like they used to do these things where they stand next to each other. Right. Well, they still do that, like twenty twenty, and they, you know, they right. mirror. But it'd be that kind of thing, like you, you talk, you do your story, come back, and you have the blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, do I do, you know, right. blah, blah, blah. Uh, and but, we're kind of doing that now. Yeah, we're kind of doing it now. We're See, it took, it well, it took us, because we, we had a great idea. We had a, yeah. We had to leave to make uh, it happen. But yeah, I, have, I had some really good times there. Um, but I remember you and, uh, and Quita uh, mm -hmm. there and uh, the, whole, the whole staff. They had their own, we did too, I guess, but you kind of had your own group. You had your uh, photographer, producer. Yes. So uh, I will tell you that yeah. one of the things that ABC team, when I was there, I definitely was a segment that they put a lot of resources into. Oh, they so did. I had my own photographer, mm -hmm. I had my own producers. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when I got hired, I had two producers. Oh, wow. But eventually I learned how to produce. So yeah. we, did, we only had one producer, which was Queen. And you got that salary too then? No. Yes, I, ha I, got, I got half that salary. No, don't I wish. <laughs> they always make you more, work more and they pay you the same. I know. But, but I love that job. I loved it passionately yeah. because it is who I am. But, and then I also had my own photographer, which made everybody in the newsroom. So like you had your reporters mm -hmm. and you had your anchors. Now the anchors don't really go out and do stories. Now they do, but they back do. in the day they yeah. didn't. Hmm. Um, they were they sat on the anchor desk and they read the script. And they were and very pretty. Them. Right. They were very pretty, very pretty and they were very well taken yeah. care of. Okay. And But the reporters, now they were the ones that had to slep and do all the hard work. And it's still to this day. Were you there during the time when there was a transition during our time when everything became, we used to have photographer Back in the day, they had sound person, yeah, lighting, everything. all that stuff. 
Then they went through that transition, and it's where we all became um, one man bands. Yeah, we all became photographers. We became editors. Yeah. So they put me through all the training, yeah, like me you too. guys. It was like a month worth of training. It was yeah. very extensive. It was awesome. And I remember sitting through this training, going, "Oh my god, I love this so much!" Because I'm a computer nerd. Yeah, I love sitting behind the computer and editing. It's yeah. my favorite thing. But they were like, after they trained, they're like, "Oh yeah, no, we're still going to give you your own photographer." <laughs> so I basically got trained and learned all this wonderful skill set, but I never got to use it until now. I wanted to have my own photographer. I didn't want to use the, yeah, the, the skill set. Yeah, and I wanted set. my own photographer. You wanted your own, yeah. Uh, I remember carrying that stuff around. And actually, the Better Business Bureau was great because I used to go there, and they were very nice to sit down. And we had to figure out things that, I mean, I'm thinking about my questions. So I want to do, you know, oh, uh -huh. i got to get them this way. And now I'm going to think, okay, well, how do I have to sit them? Is there a plant around I could put over <laughs> here? What angle is going to be? Right. Am I crossing axis? Because, you know, you have to do it a certain way. Otherwise, it looks bad. They, they're looking this way, and you're over here. That's yeah. not good, you know. Um, and so I, uh, that was, was crazy. <laughs> I remember, I remember when Katie, the anchor at the time, Katie Ram was still there. Yeah. had to go out with a camera. Oh yeah. You think, and, yeah. And I, I, she's logging this camera around. I'm thinking, oh man, your main anchor. That's right. Cause uh, that's the thing. Cause you yeah. know, back in the day, like being on TV was like this whole thing. Yeah. Like, you were literally like a celebrity. Like, yeah. I love well, being on TV back then cause I got treated like I was a celebrity. And well, you're smart, smart shopper. shopper. Yeah. That's when we started Let Y'all Know in 2012, maybe. Right. We uh, we had no idea what we were going to do. I mean, well, what do we call it? And Is I it pulled Joe aside. I said, you need to come up with the schlep, yeah. a tagline. Yeah. And uh, so we came up with, if you got a problem, let me know. Right. I'm Joe Ducey. If you got a problem, let, let me, me know. know. Yes. But it was only because of you and that smart shopper that uh -huh. everybody loved. It, just kind of a, it was a memory thing. It was yes. kind of an iconic thing that... You linked with the person exactly. and it was a good idea. Yeah. And that's the thing is that when they, they gave me the privilege of having this entire segment revolve around me, Daphne mm -hmm. Monroe. So you had your, your thing, mm -hmm. but I remember when I started there, like they were like, yeah, I had to say ABC 15 news. I'm like, this isn't news. Like yeah. I'm telling people how to go to the store and get a deal of the day. I mean, it's news, but it's not really news. Yeah. So that's when I came up with. Nah, man, I'm your smart shopper. I'm going around yeah. town finding deals, and my name's Daphne, and I'm your smart shopper. So that's where I came up with, here we go, here we go. I'm Daphne Monroe, your yeah. smart shopper. That's it, was the, it, was the, it wasn't even awful, but you had to do it just right. Your It wasn't smart like shopper. your, you know, <laughs> then it would be bad. You know, yeah. Like later or earlier, right. it had to be right at that time. Yeah. Right, and yeah. they were like, you, you got to stop saying they got to stop pointing to people. People, you know, we had a lot Did of they really? Oh, yeah. Our consultants say, were like, oh, you, you, we got people writing in. They're like, stop having a point at the TV. It's very rude. And I thought to myself, and then I go, and I'm absolutely not going to stop because the fact that you have all these people writing in, that means they're remembering. I'm yeah. sorry that they're offended by it, but they'll eventually love it. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, uh, and you guys came up with all these deals. I mean, it was just, it's, it was every, great, we, you know? You know, Bob Sullivan, let me just mention him, uh -huh. his name. He's probably going to be like, why did she mention me this on Bob? Bob uh, on this podcast, but he, he hired both of us. Yeah. He was one of my favorite bosses. He in had a great world. eye for talent. He did. He still does. <laughs> he still has a great eye for talent. Yeah. And, 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 and the type of boss that he is, is the boss that I love. Yeah. He doesn't want to watch you making the sausage. He just wants to see the end product. Yeah. So he's like, here's what I want. I want viewers tuning in. I want this to be informative. And I want you to show people how to save deals. Have at it, Daphne. Mm -hmm. And that's all he did. And he was the greatest boss for yeah. two years. He just lets you do your job. Yeah. That's, it's hard to find. Maybe it's impossible there are, to find. There are, uh, those are the best bosses. And it doesn't even matter in some ways like the time you're there. I mean, if you get the job done and they have, you meet your quota and more, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter when you do it. To no. me. As a, I'd I say if you want to do it at midnight at your house and you get to your writing, that's great. You don't have to be here from 2 to 4 o'clock or whatever right. it is that you don't like. Um, anyway, that's the way I look at it. But then he left. I did leave. Right. Yeah. Well, I was saying about Bob, but he left. Oh, Bob, he yeah, left yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just Bob saying, like, left. and yep. that's when things change. And so, and. Yeah, but it, we had, I had good experiences there. After and that I did too. too. Yeah, I, I did, did too. Really. But that was a wonderful yeah. time to allow the foundation of that segment. Mm -hmm. I had the freedom to do it. Now, once he left, we started getting a little more structure, a little more control, a little more this and that. And then at some point, it just didn't work out for me. It was just, it was just best that I left. It's it time for you. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone outgrows everything. So I had a wonderful ABC 15 is a place I will never forget. Oh. And I met so many wonderful friends like you, which yeah. is so great. I mean, it was some good times. So wonderful. Definitely. I, I feel the same. Those overall memories are really good. Um, but yeah, but I, I felt the same way. When you left, there was a gaping hole in the newsroom. <laughs> 
Joe. That's sweet. <laughs> I miss, uh, I miss it. I miss. I missed it over there. Of course. Who got your office? Sports. Yeah, sports got. Sports but they wanted it. I saw Craig Fui. He had his eyes all over. He was Fooey, like, "How does she have that office?" He looks so nice. Mm. <laughs> Everyone's like, "How does she have that guy. office?" Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah. And he's still there. He's still there. I used to say to Fui, "Fui, you can't quit because I will be the oldest person in this right? newsroom." Yeah. And then I quit. Right. Uh, so but you know, <laughs> he's still the oldest person in the newsroom. No yeah. offense, Craig. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't look at him. He looks great. Yeah. Oh yeah, so. he's such a handsome guy. Yeah. So okay, so enough about reminiscing with the uh, old days yeah. with ABC 15. But one other thing, you said you're at the BBB. Now yeah. let's talk about the BBB. Now I am. I know back in the day, whenever I would do business with a company, I would go to the BBB. If that company was registered with the BBB, mm -hmm. that was all the research I needed to do. Since then, since social media has been introduced, like in 2007. It feels as though like there's so many other different avenues mm -hmm. where you can do research, read reviews, go to places like Yelp to find out about these businesses. Is the BBB still like that? Like, is it still a resource for consumers to go to and verify businesses still good? Yeah. I mean, I know what you're saying, but yeah, um, I think that the better, even when I was, when I've been a reporter in any market and here in Arizona, I relied on the uh, Better Business Bureau to look up various companies to see, like, I'd get a complaint about whatever car dealership. And I'd look it up on the Better Business Bureau because I trust those reviews. Because the reviews there, they're transparent, which we love. They're thorough. It's not just, you know, yeah, I ate there. It was great. Or I ordered mm -hmm. the, the sushi it's not and just it was whatever. Yeah. It was, here's what happened. And then you could look at patterns because you can go through, like, 80, 80 reviews or complaints and look at patterns like, oh, God, that happened to her too. Oh, that happened here. Oh, okay. I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's a great place to go. And the other thing that Better Business Bureau does, that's before you uh, buy. Uh -huh. The other thing they do is, they, well, they've got accredited businesses. These are businesses that are high, held to a higher standard. They have to address all the complaints in some way. So they have um, to live up to BBB standards in right. order to get the stamp of BBB. Yeah. That's why when a company has a stamp of BBB, accredited business, you know yeah. that they're good to go. So they're yeah. still doing that. They're still doing that. And uh, those are the businesses, they have torch awards. They have, you know, they get various awards for ethics. Um, and those are the businesses you probably want to stick with. But I would also look at, you know, all the reviews there as well. That's beforehand. If there's a problem afterwards, they're also a good place to go to um, because they, you become part of the reviews if you complain. Mm -hmm. But also the Better Business Bureau gets involved. I mean, they actually go to the business with your complaint and say, hey, Daphne had didn't like that funeral home deal that was going on here. Mm -hmm. You know, what are you going to do about it? And then they have to respond in some way. If they don't respond... There, I, I believe that They're their grade goes is affected mm -hmm. by that. So there aren't most so of these policing. other sites are posting sites, and there's no policing here. They actually try to help you revolve it. Now they're not going to take every single complaint and, and work it all the way down to the nitty gritty. Right. They can't do that. They don't have the staff, the resources. But they will contact the business, and they will let the business know there's this complaint, and they will get, try to get a response from the business. You don't see that on Yelp. You don't see that on these other places. Okay, so let me yeah. let me say that one more time. I keep on saying this word, but policing. Yeah. and accountability. Yeah. That's what the BBB is yeah. doing. And that's why you want to do your research. And if you're a business and you're starting out and you want some credibility, that's a good place to go to build up some credibility because if you have the stamp of BBB, that shows that you are a good business. Well, they've got also, the cool thing about this place, which I didn't even really, you know, I knew it was there and they made a big deal about it, but I was kind of like, oh, okay, because I was interested in other things, mm -hmm. like consumer complaints, is they've got this whole uh, Ignite area where they, they have a whole building that where they can they have it like an incubator for new businesses. Mm -hmm. They allow new businesses to come in. They help them with loans and various things to get off their feet. That's great. And then if they want to become members later, which is, I think, the Better Business Bureau hope, that's great. But they will help them. In the, and they also have the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce located in that building. Yes, they do. I so it's that, like yeah. a real incubator. And uh, Matt uh, Failing, the CEO, has been, I think, pretty innovative about thinking of ways to kind of do things differently. Yeah. Let's figure out a way to get other businesses well, involved and start things hence up. Hence why you're there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, they made that position for me, so I'm, I'm glad. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, and you know, I'm a huge I'm a huge proponent of the BBB too, so I love to promote them. It's never it's never a, a, a yeah. topic that's that's not because I reference the BBB often. Yeah. So I'm glad to see that they're there. I'm glad to see that they're still making business get in line with the proper way of doing business. Yeah, and I, and I, the other good thing is they they check licenses. Sometimes you'll see on there like a red flag. It'll say, hey, the, the attorney general in this place did something about this or they've been you know, accused of uh, deceptive ad practices. You'll see those things on the site mm -hmm. for the business. And the so, BBB's website is BBB.org? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that's BBB.org. Yeah, and you get there and then you can put in Phoenix or wherever you are. Because this one handles uh, San Diego 
Orange County, California, and also the uh, this area. Okay, in Phoenix. And uh, Yuma. Okay. Yeah. Okay, wow. So all yeah. the west, kind of west yeah. coast places there. So that's great. Joe, I am glad to see yeah. that you're still fighting for us consumers and educating us. Just We're just going to see you on a different platform now. Not on regular TV, but we will see Hopefully you on do. social media, <laughs> yeah. YouTube, the yeah. BBB channel, yeah. and so forth and so on. And thank you for taking time out of your day to come by and visit. Daphne, it's been great. It has. You know, I love you. So yeah, yeah, we'll, do we'll do it again. We'll do it again. Yes, right. yes, yes. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up. And so all the information will be on my blog at smartshopperdaphne.com. And you can watch me until I have another episode on social media at smartshopperdaphne.com and don't forget i'm daphne monroe you let me know <laughs> smart shopper have a great day